A filmmaker from Cheshire is making a movie to raise awareness of post-traumatic stress disorder suffered by soldiers returning from war. Filmed in Alderley Edge, Nutsford and Wilmslow, it's based on a true story. Last year around 4,000 UK troops were diagnosed with mental health problems. And as JC Norman reports, shattered emotions and fearful nightmares are nothing new for soldiers. A century ago, it had no name. As the horrors of the First World War unfolded, medics began to realize that wounds weren't just physical. Psychiatrists overwhelmed with patients who couldn't walk or talk had to accept there had been mental trauma. They called it shell shock and treated 80,000 cases. But a ceasefire doesn't always mean the end of a soldier's suffering. A hundred years on and a new film is trying to raise awareness for the condition known as post-traumatic stress disorder. Max is up there sobbing his heart out. Oh, baby, this isn't you. This isn't the Ben I know. We filmed all around here, up the road. The film's been made by actor Scott Ryan Vickers, who's used his own house in Poynton as one of the locations. I've left my mark on the house. Uh, this is the scene where I had to break in, smash the door down, I put my foot through the window, so I had to get that repaired. Scott has personal experience of PTSD and wanted to make a hard-hitting film. He'd spent two years writing the film, which is called Advance to Contact, a military description for engaging the enemy. He plays Ben, a former soldier who can't settle into civilian life. His own experience of stress and PTSD was the catalyst for the project. My sister died when I was 18 or 19 and it affected me in a very strange way. I didn't, I wasn't affected immediately, I felt kind of just very empty and then gradually <laughs> for the next couple of years I started to get depressed, I didn't know why. It stops you doing normal things, it stops you acting normal or being yourself. It, the only way I can explain it is your mind kind of turns against you. That's, that's the only way I can explain it and, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder can be suffered by anyone. Eddie Edwards from Preston is a former para who served tours in Northern Ireland, Bosnia, Kosovo and four in Iraq. He's lost close friends, seen colleagues blown up, and survived so many hostile encounters, he believes if he'd been a cat, he'd now be dead. At the time, you just, you don't acknowledge it. You try to distance yourself away from the actual incident, but at the same time, your training does kick in, and you, you just go like a, as, a, as a robot sort of thing. You know what you've got to do, when you've got to do it, how you've got to do it, so you'll crack on, do the job, and then it's when you get five, ten minutes head down, that's when it starts sort of like sitting back. You're thinking, Christ, I've just done this, I've just done that, I've been here, I've seen this, I've seen that. When he returned from Iraq, he couldn't settle into civilian life. His wife Becky noticed the change immediately. I met Ed, a happy, relaxing person. When he came back from Iraq, he was a moody, um, didn't want to know anything, um, and he worried about everything. And I was worried because it was me and Ed had just got engaged so but I, need, I knew that I needed to stand by him because I loved him for who we were. I could walk down the street and I could see somebody in their traditional dress and I have to look twice or if I hear a bang or if I see fire I'm very very on edge because it's not that I see it visually it's it brings back the memories which makes it all real again majority of the time I won't go out of the house or I'll, I like to be somewhere where I know I'm not going to have certain noises. Um, like bonfire night, earplugs. And I guess it affects your sleep and everything. Yeah, sleep wise, that I don't think I'll ever probably get a good night's sleep again. I, um, me and my wife can't, unfortunately can't share beds because of some nights I'm, I'm lashing out. Um, extreme sweat, screaming, shouting. Uh, I just feel like the only way to describe is I'm being electrocuted, my arms and legs are lashing out left, right and centre. Right? Yeah, fine. 
The film also stars Sarah Jane Dunn, an actress best known for her role as Mandy Richardson in Hollyoaks. She plays the long-suffering wife Jess, who knows her husband needs help. It shows what the families of um, sufferers of post-traumatic stress disorder go through, um, especially the wives of, of soldiers returning from the war. But it tells a positive story as well of the fact that there is help out there, the fact that he gets support from his friends, from his family, the fact that he gets to breaking point, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. Ben, we need to do something about this. You don't sleep, you're paranoid, you're angry all the time. Doesn't the regiment have someone you can talk to? What do you mean, paranoid? Help for war vets is scarce, but one former soldier is changing that. They're going to have to work together as a team to formulate a plan. In offices near Chorley, Steve Pearson has set up a charity called Our Local Heroes Foundation. Staff help soldiers face their future and live their lives as normally as possible. Money raised by the film will be donated to the charity. How did you find it after the operation, though, and uh, with the pen wise? Steve Pearson has also taught himself to be a radio presenter, and each week he broadcasts on a Preston community station. Good evening, and welcome to Heroes Hour, the show dedicated to our... Today, his guest is Anthony Cooper, who was badly injured while serving in Afghanistan with the Duke of Lancaster's regiment. Anthony spent five weeks in a coma after standing on a makeshift bomb. He lost both his legs at the knee, his right eye, two fingers on his left hand and suffered a severe brain injury. The thing is, my section commander was stood right behind me and he got blown into the river, covered in my blood, so everyone thought it was him that was injured and then he was pretty traumatised. I think when people actually realise that there is something um, that um, they are actually sort of suffering from a, a, a mental illness, uh, which is what it is, um, they're suffering sort of from mental illness, um, that it needs help uh, and it needs addressing, um, then people will sort of become more aware of it uh, and less likely to shun them uh, and make them outcasts. This northern based production was crewed by people who have agreed to give up their time for free. And to edit his film, Scott's come down to this London based production house who also aren't charging. I think it should be a little bit crisper. Scott's film runs for half an hour and will be released in the summer. It deals with an emotive and complicated issue, but he believes there is also optimism. Like I was saying, it'd be great if a soldier did watch it and think, you know, it's not just me and. It's not all my fault and there is help out there. The conflicts of the last century have also produced advances in the treatment of combat stress, but not a complete cure. Eddie Edwards is recovering thanks to counselling sessions where he's encouraged to talk about the past which haunts him. But like a virus, it can spread to the people he loves most. I sat with every counselling session he went through for a year um, and I was heavily pregnant near the end of the worst ones as well. Um, and the stories I heard, I have nightmares now, you know, and it really does affect my life. I don't think I'll ever come to terms with it. It's, it's something that I've got. I know I can't do nothing with it. I'm always going to have it and it's just life now, I've just got to carry on as, as best as I can.